Hello everybody, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be building this cool uh, loader animation, kind of infinite loader animation. Uh, it's kind of a killer animation. I made it a while ago and it got a lot of attractions uh, in the web. Um, so in order to build such a thing, we can't use it with CSS or HTML. We actually need to use SVG. And for those of you who do not know what SVG is, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics that you can actually use in the browser uh, apart from some other sort of uh, graphics uh, frameworks or tools like Illustrator or others, uh, which is a pretty cool, powerful thing. And you can create things like this. So in order to make this, we uh, use a library called Moveit that we created ourselves. Um, if you already don't know what it is, please read this document or this page. I'm going to link it in the description of this uh, video. Uh, it's basically a lightweight SVG path manipulation and animation library. It also, I want to mention that we created this page really in 10 minutes using the Kothus UI library. If you go to kothus.com, you can find it under the front end link. Um, that's another powerful thing that you can use to create any kind of web page. And I will have some tutorials and perhaps some uh, web pages that we can build together. But for the starter, let's start figuring out how this Move It library use, uh, works, and then we can create this uh, awesome animation. So going back to the empty prototype in kothus.com slash codenest, uh, uh, let's create an SVG. I'm going to create it by hand. So I'm going to create an SVG, and then I will create a path element in it. And then there is a D attribute that you, you need to kind of fill in. Uh, we say M00, meaning that starts from the zero and zero of the SVG viewport. And then I will say, let's, un let's say 100 and zero, meaning that I want it to go 100 on X uh, axis and zero, the same as the Y axis. Uh, let's style this, let's give it a class, uh, maybe like progress. Uh, I'm going to CSS, I will style this progress element or this progress path. I will say stroke color is let's say zero, zero, zero. And you can see there is already like a line over here and I can say stroke width, perhaps something like five. Uh, you can see that it gets a little bit bigger. Um, one thing I can do here is perhaps uh, give it a, uh, we already have one SVG. I'm going to style the SVG itself. So I'm, so I'm going to say SVG uh, position absolute. I'm trying to center it in the page. And then left 50%, top 50%, and then transform, translate, minus 50%, and minus 50%. Uh, so basically, this kind of centers the SVG element in the page. Uh, and then obviously, it kind of has the line over here. So now, how do we use Move It to animate this path? Perhaps I can make it a little bit larger, let's say 300, so we have a larger. Uh, Next thing we want to do, we want to include uh, the library, the Move It library in our code. Right here in the editor, you click on this gear icon up here in the JS, and then you just, you know, add the the link to where the library resides. Uh, it is right now in kotus.com uh, slash uh, Move It. Uh, 0.5, that's the version uh, of the library. You can also check it out here in the Move It library page. You can literally just copy this uh, and put it in the script tag in your body if you are uh, not using this editor or any other editor. So I'm just going to paste it over here, uh, removing here. So now when I save this, uh, it it is included in my project. Then I do have this progress class, so I need to select this path. What I'm going to do is I create a constant called progress, uh, select it using document.query selector, and then pass the class progress. Uh, and then the way Move It works is that you have to instantiate the Move It library. So you have to create an object. I'm going to call it Move It for now. You can name it whatever. And then you do new Move It. And then you pass first 
first element first argument is the element here so progress and then the second is an object that defines the start and end of your path so i would say start would be zero uh, percent it's basically a string based on percentage and end also as well i'm gonna say zero percent right so now you can see that uh I'm just going to correct this. So now you can see that the, the thing goes away, the line goes away, because the start and end are on 0% uh, of the path. So if I make it 100%, you will see that this is the 0% and this is the 100% based, based on the you know direction of the path that we created. So initially, I want to make it 0. Then the next step is I do have move it object right now I just use the set method on it and then define the new kind of uh, attributes that I want to apply to that uh, SVG path I will say I still want the start to be on 0% but then I want the end to be 100% right and then I want to define a uh, sort of a duration for it because I want it to be an animation and this is based on seconds so if I say 2 you will see that you have this cool kind of animation from 0, 0 from the starting point to 0 and 100 at the end of it, right? So again, if I try try giving it like 10 seconds, you will see that it actually will take you 10 seconds to uh, finish to this uh, ending position over here, right? Apart from that, if you go to Move It Library, uh, you can see that, that there is a documentation, inline documentation here, and you can actually use delay so that you have a delay before the animation starts, and also you can apply timing functions. So, for example, I can use timing is in, and you will see what happens here. So, let's change this to maybe, uh, let's say, two seconds. I'm going to give it a bigger stroke that you can see it better. So, let's say 10. And now if I apply an easing function here, so I would say easing and I say uh, ease in, so ease in, you'll see that, you know, the way it handles it is that, let me save this first, you'll see that it starts and then if, if I try it again, you'll see what I mean. So it actually starts uh, slower and then uh, gets to be faster if i do it is out you'll see that it starts quicker but at the end it, it it becomes a little bit slower and that's how you can incorporate the timing right sorry the mistake was that i used easing but it's actually timing you can see that at the end it starts a little bit slower and if i set it to ease in You'll see that it starts a little bit slow at the end, and then uh, at the start, and then it goes faster. You can also define a delay, like let's say a delay two seconds. So what it really does, it will wait one, two, and then it will start the animation. So that's how you can incorporate move it in your SVG animation. So for this tutorial, what we want to do, uh, we want to actually create this cool animation. I already have the path uh, kind of parameter, so I'm going to use that. Um, so I'm just going to copy this here uh, and remove everything we've added over here. I'm just going to do it. Uh, and then here in the HTML, I'm going to uh, add this, uh, adding the ending SVG. So this basically represents like an infinite uh, in the SVG. So, and I found it somewhere on the web, to be honest. Like, I didn't make it myself. You could use Illustrator or some of these vector graphics software to create this if you want. But I found it on the web uh, because the main purpose here was the animation of it. The next thing I want to do is to style this, right? So, we have an SVG with the width of 120 pixel, height of 60 pixel, and it already has like a path in it. So to be able to style this, I would like to make the background, uh, the bo body background to be, uh, let's say something really dark. So perhaps one, 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 that would make it black. Then the actual SVG, I want to center it in the page, right? So I would set the position as always position to be absolute. Then I want the left to be 50% and then top to be 50% and then transform, translate, minus 50% and minus 50%.
By the way, you see I get these auto completions. If you go to the settings, you can actually enable the CSS autocomplete here. And that's how I get the auto completion on my uh, CSS. So now I centered my element in the page. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to style the path, right? That's the path that actually represents uh, the uh, current. I can even just remove the stroke from here. Um, so now what I can do here, I can set a fill. I want it to be none. Right now it's uh, completely black. I don't want to have any fill on it. I, I want to have a stroke of, let's say, 2 to 2. Uh, you can see that it kind of shows off a little bit. I want the stroke width to be a little bit uh, big, like maybe 12. And then I also want the stroke line cap to be uh, round. And that's pretty much uh, how you can see that the ending of this path is kind of rounded in the, uh, instead of a sharp like uh, line. So I do already have this. Uh, this is going to be my background uh, in this uh, you know, animation. And I need to do another one for the actual path that I'm going to animate. Right? And to be able to do that, it's exactly the same. So what I need to do is basically copy that uh, same SVG and paste it back here. Uh, since the SVG in the CSS is defined as absolute, uh, they will be on top of each other. But because of the order in the HTML, this one will be on top of this one. And then I also want to uh, assign a class to this one so that I can animate it. So I would say infinity path. And then what I can do simply, I can come in the CSS again and just change the stroke for that one to be white, right? So I would say uh, infinity, infinity path. And I just set the stroke to be a white color, as you can see right here. Now, the best thing here will be the move it library. Uh, as you know, I already added it here. Uh, so the next step for me to achieve this is write a piece of JavaScript that actually does the job. So I will define a, a constant called infinity. I'll do document dot query selector. I know that I give it a class. I gave it a class infinity path, just like that. And then I will in instantiate it with uh, with the move it. So I just say infinity loader is new move it. So we create a new object from the move it class. Uh, I called it infinity and the second parameter I want the start to be 0% and then I want the end to be 10%. Right? So now you can see that uh, it, the start of it is 0. That's pretty much the start of the path of this. And then the end is the 10% of the whole path, right? Now it's time to animate it. And since I, this animation is kind of an infinite animation, uh, what I can do here is uh, I can define um, an animation. So infinity icon as I, uh, or sorry, loader as I called it. And then I can do a set method on it. I want the start to be 73% uh, and I'll tell you why. I want the end to be 101% and I want the duration to be 2 seconds. You can see that now it kind of has this animation, right? So it starts from 73% uh, and the end to be 101. Uh, and that's where the end is and that's where the start will become. So be the, the start is now on 73% and the end is on 101%, which is pretty much like 1% over the starting point, right? Now I want to make it infinite. And that's another cool thing with uh, Move It Library. What I can do, I can define a callback function to basically call this animation over and over again. And to be able to do that, I need to put this in some sort of a method. So I will define a method called animate. And then I will put that in the animate function uh, or animate method, just like this. And the only thing I need to do is to call the animate, right? And then uh, let me just, the syntax-wise is correct. Now you can see that we have the same 
thing, but uh, I added it in the animate method and I called the animate and it had. Now, the cool thing with uh, move it is that you can define a new uh, key here called callback, which is going to be a function. And this function, you can call animate again within this function. So by the end of this animation, it starts doing that again, right? So you do uh, start, end, and then duration, and then callback. So this callback basically uh, will try to call the uh, animation again. But the, the only issue is that I defined it using uh, ES6 format. So if I define it like a function animate, like that now you can see that it actually starts like properly animating it it actually doesn't right the reason why it doesn't do it is that apart from defining the callback since we are like on 101 percent which is one percent over 100 percent of the path and we want to have an infinite we have to actually add a new key called follow to be true so meaning that just follow the path over and start over Right. So now you can see that it actually starts having this cool sort of animation. Again, going over everything, uh, we created two SVG path, one for background path and one for the actual one that we want to animate. In the CSS, we start the path and ultimately we use the move it library to kind of animate this path initially by setting the initial position of the path on zero and 10 percent of the whole path and then we created a method or a function called animate and then we started calling it here for one-time animation and then we defined a follow through to kind of go over this animation uh, all over again and then we always use the callback saying that whenever you reach to this point where your start was 73 percent and your end was 101 percent follow through and call animate again meaning that go through this over and over and over again, right? So yes, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, start using Movit library. Uh, it's a pretty cool if you want to animate path, uh, as you can see. Uh, and let me know what you think about this uh, library. I mean, what, what we do, we always maintain these libraries and also make them better and better and better again. So Later, we're going to have some more tutorials and some cool uh, animations using Movit Library. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great day and night and see you next time. Thank you.